Francis wanted me to share these uh, notes with you, first of all, just to thank the uh, Bioinformatics Workshop, but also to say that all the lectures are going to be made available. So it's going to be up and access. Or you can share them and everything, but you've got to make sure that you follow these rules if you do so. Um, <clears throat> So today, the, the well, today and tomorrow, the workshop is going to be about exploratory data analysis and uh, especially uh, doing that using R. So you're going to learn a little bit about R and also a little bit about statistics and in particular something that I really like and I think is very important uh, in, in data analysis is what I call exploratory data analysis. So I would say right away that, you know, this workshop you're going to learn a lot, but uh, I mean, I don't want to fool you and you shoot probably shouldn't fool yourself after a couple of days you're not going to be an expert in statistics uh, nor you're going to be an art expert uh, but hopefully um, you will be aware of statistics you will know what it is you will understand the main concepts uh, you will understand that it's very important and you will be able to use R and maybe learn R in a better way so I think at this uh, at the end of this workshop uh, what you will have learned is that R is a very good tool it's not that difficult to learn and uh, statistics is very useful and it's not that difficult either and hopefully this is going to push you to try to uh, take more uh, statistics courses or learn R by yourself. So as I say, the goal will be <coughs> first of all to try to display statistical information properly and this is in particular using exploratory data analysis. Uh, then understand what the, the main uh, basic concepts uh, of statistics are, so such as what is a p-value, uh, should I do a two-sample t-test or a paired t-test, uh, do we need multiple testing, what is multiple testing. So we're going to touch on all of these issues, uh, probably we'll go over all of this today actually. Uh, and also you're going to get a first exposition to the R statistical language. So R is a really nice language, uh, it's free, it's open source, I'm going to say a little bit more about that. Uh, and it's not very difficult to use, even if you don't really know how to program or you've never used a programming language before. Uh, so here's the outline for uh, today. Uh, first, we'll start with the basics of R. We'll go on to some very toy-like examples. We use R, you will use R, and we'll see how we can uh, uh, deal with a couple of things that we do. Then we're going to try to, so all along the workshop we'll be using R, but then we're going to try to use R in trying to do more uh, statistical analysis and first using all the graphics uh, methods of R using exploratory data analysis. Then we'll look at one and two sample t-tests, multiple testing, bootstrap, uh, and tomorrow morning we'll talk about multivariate exploratory data analysis using what I call singular value decomposition or principal component analysis, which is the same thing. Okay, so... Um, before starting, I wanted to tell you a little bit about statistics and why uh, it is important. So if you, if you look at the New York Times probably in the, the past six months, you will see that there was a couple, actually three really nice articles uh, that show that statistics is very important. Uh, the last one to get published was the, uh, net, the uh, Netflix uh, contest. So if you guys don't know about that, uh, that, that contest. Um, <clears throat> basically what Netflix wanted to do is to try to improve the, the, the uh, the user rating and the categories of new films so that you can make better recommendation for other people to rent movies. Uh, so what they've asked people is to come up with statistical uh, models or statistical methods in trying to improve these recommendation and these ratings. And uh, there's, so I think, I can't remember exactly, but I think you had to improve it by at least 10% uh, uh, over the current uh, status of the rating and recommendations. And there was a one million uh, one million dollar prize uh, for the, the the team who could actually improve that rating uh, of ten percent. And just a week ago, the the prize was announced, and there was a team who actually won that. Uh, that same team actually tried a couple of years ago, and they couldn't improve it by ten percent. They could only improve it by uh, some percentage, and they really won some kind of prize. But this year, they actually managed to do it. And guess what? This team was actually made of, of uh, several statisticians, and one of them is called uh, Chris Walensky. He was a PhD student at the University of Washington and worked with Adrian Raftery, who was also my advisor at the University of Washington. Um, so in, there's really many real-life examples where you can see that statistics is very important, and it can really help you a lot in doing things that probably uh, people couldn't do without. 
Uh, here's another um, article. I don't know if you saw that one. So this one, um, I, th I think it was published maybe, I can't remember if I see the date, but I would say maybe three uh, months ago or so. Uh, so this was about a graduate student in archaeology. And <clears throat> when she actually finished, she um, took on a job at Google. And because um, you know, a lot of people think that in archaeology, you just go in, you know, and, and in some places and look for bones and things. But in fact, you deal with a lot of data. And a, lo a big part of the job is actually to do data analysis. Um, and so this was saying that um, statistics is really going to be very important. It's going to be uh, playing a key role in many of, um, of the fields uh, that we're going to see in the next decade, uh, not only biology and bioinformatics, but lots of places we're trying to gather lots of data. And it's very important to be able to make sense of these data. Um, and this also tells you that you know if you've got a PhD in statistics, uh, I think it says somewhere in the article, you can make $125,000 a year if you work at Google. Uh, so maybe I should work at Google. Uh, here's another interesting article. This is about R. Again, it was published in the New York Times. Um, and this is what this is. So this this was to say that basically R is a great tool. It's open source. It's open access. It's free. You can download it. Um, and it started kind of a, I'm going to give you a little bit of history in R, but it started as almost like a, a, a fun project, you know, like a, a toy project, you know. So this is Robert Gentleman and uh, Rosie Hacker. They were at the uh, University of New Zealand, and they started to work on that project just kind of like for fun. They wanted to, to derive a tool that their students could use. Um, and it's become so important that so many people use it um, that they probably never imagined that that many people will use R. Um, and many companies now they use it, such as Google, uh, Pfizer, Merck, and so forth. Um, and there was a nice article to try to summarize all that uh, in the New York Times. So if, you, if you've never read these articles, I really encourage you to do that. It's very, very interesting. Uh, so these are sort of three examples just to show you that R and statistics are very important in, uh, in uh, today's life. OK, so let's see a little bit of history, uh, because a lot of you have, have um, uh, heard of R, but maybe you don't know too much about how it comes from and for you know how long it's been around and so forth. Uh, so this is a nice sentence that probably doesn't tell you very much. R is the son of S. Well, this is great. I don't know what S is. Uh, well, S is a statistical programming language developed by John Chambers uh, from uh, Bell Labs. So, uh, and this is actually a sentence from uh, John that says the goal of S was to was to turn ideas into software quickly and faithfully. So the idea was to have a programming language that would be easy enough for people to use without knowing too much about programming. And you could uh, deal with um, uh, data and data analysis very efficiently. Uh, so S was actually created in 1976. Uh, um, but at that time, you could only run on a specific operating system. It wasn't very friendly. You couldn't do very much with it. I mean, as you can imagine, it was created at a research lab and was mainly created for their research. It wasn't really meant to be mainstream software. Um, but it, it, it turned out to be very important, especially for statisticians. So uh, in 1988, uh, the S language arrived, and it was actually introduced many changes compared to the original uh, S language, such as uh, you had functions, and you could uh, use it on many operating systems, such as Unix servers and so forth. And there was also the famous uh, Blue Book, uh, the Blue S Book that people use a lot. It's a good reference. There's a lot of good things about S. Um, great. So version 4 was introduced in 1998. Again, it probably doesn't tell you too much about version 4. But uh, it's just to say that this is sort of so R is based on that version of S. So if you write something in S version 4, it will work in R. You can probably just copy and paste it, and it will work. Uh, and it was introduced as a formal class method model. I'll tell you a little bit more about class and methods uh, as we go along, though it's, not, it's a little bit out of scope for this workshop. Uh, so this is the bad news uh, about S, is that in 1993, a company called uh, StatSci uh, which are the makers of S plus acquire exclusive license to S. So this means that after 1993, if you wanted to use S, you had to pay uh, a license. Uh, 
of course it was sort of a, a company so they made a nice interface you had a GUI uh, and you had a full customer support um, and the company who was actually created uh, in um, before 1993, which was called Insightful, was actually created by uh, a, a statistics professor of the University of Washington uh, called uh, Douglas Martin. And now I think uh, S Plus was bought by another company making Spotfire uh, just a couple of years ago. Okay, so what about R? So R was actually created by uh, Ross Hihaka and Robert Gentleman at the University of Auckland in New Zealand. And the goal of R was to create um, a statistical language that, first of all, would be free, open access. You wouldn't have to, to um, uh, buy a license. It would be easy to use for their students when they would teach statistics. And actually, so when people started to, um, so there's a lot of stories about uh, Robert Gentleman. So at that time, um, let me see if I have the date when it actually started. Yeah, it started in 1991. So at that time, Robert Gentleman was sort of talking about R. Uh, he was already coming to Canada quite a bit, and he was sort of saying to people, oh yeah, you know, I've started that new project, we're going to just rewrite S and, and start the R uh, language, and people would just say, are you crazy or what, why are you doing that, you know, the, there's the S language and S plus, this is such a waste of time, you know, trying to rewrite a, a language from scratch. Uh, so people didn't really believe in it. But it turned out to be a great idea because it was free and open access, and it actually made the, the fact that it was free and open uh, open access made it much better than uh, S plus, and I'm going to tell you why. So it first appeared in 1996 uh, as an open source software. So at that time, it was still a little bit rough. I mean, you could use it; it was nice, but there was a lot of things that uh, could be improved. Um, the fact that it was free uh, and open source it made it highly customizable via uh, packages, that is people could just write packages and contribute to the actual uh, software, uh, the actual software. So the power of R is that it is based on a community, you can uh, collaborate with people, you can write code that people use, you can uh, package your code into packages that are freely available, there are places and websites where you can download these packages. Everything's free. Um, and it's also, you always have the, the state-of-the-art uh, statistical um, <clears throat> methods. It's because people who contribute to R are actually researchers in statistics or the field. So you're always going to get the, the best of the of statistical methods you can get. Um, <clears throat> of course, there exists also commercial variants of R that have built into R, but uh, they are just companies that will sort of package R in a nice way and they will sell you some... Uh, uh, customer support with it, uh, but it doesn't actually change R very much. Um, so parallel to R, there's another project that you guys have probably heard of. It's called Bioconductor. <clears throat> so Bioconductor was actually started by Robert Gentleman. So even though Robert Gentleman started R, he's not really involved in the core development of R nowadays. Uh, there's a good team who actually work in trying to make uh, R even better, improving R and doing all these changes. And uh, Robert Gentleman has sort of switched focus, and uh, he's, well, he was working on Bioconductor until very recently. He's still working a little bit on it. Uh, so Bioconductor is actually based at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center that's in Seattle. Um, it's a nice collection of packages for the analysis and comprehension of genomic data. So it goes from micro, microarray data to high throughput sequencing through uh, flow cytometry, uh, high throughput content, and so forth. Uh, because R is free, so is Bioconductor, it's open source, and of course it's open to outside contributors, and that means it's open to you guys. If you guys want to contribute something, you can. Uh, the difference with R is that there's a little bit more, uh, uh, that there are more standards, so when you submit a package to Bioconductor, people will actually check that the package works, it installs properly. Uh, there's a nice documentation, so there's good things. So there's a little bit more uh, things you have to go through when you want to submit a package in Bioconductor. Um, okay, uh, I just want to say one more thing is that even though uh, Robert Gentleman started that, uh, that was at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, the Robert Gentleman actually left the Hutch. Uh, he's now at Genentech in San Francisco. He studied a computational biology research group there. Uh, but he's still very much involved in Bioconductor, he's still up and running. There's a lot of people at the Hatch that work on that. And the person who's in charge of the project now is called Martin Morgan. 
Okay, uh, so what is R and why is it a nice platform or software to deal with statistical analysis? Um, well, the first one is that it's easy to handle data and to store data in R. Um, it's, it's nice to do calculation, and by that I mean mathematical calculations using uh, uh, matrices and so forth, just like any other uh, mathematical software package. Um, of course, it's better than that because it's more, uh, I mean, it's geared towards statisticians, so you're going to have a lot of statistical functions that you can use for data analysis that are already built in, and we're going to see some of that. Uh, you also have great graphical uh, facilities for data analysis, and you can either display that on the screen or you can make PDFs or uh, various things that you can actually use for, you know, uh, research papers, reports, whatever. Um, so, I mean, I really encourage you in the future, once you've, you know, done with this workshop uh, and you're going to be able to uh, graph a few things in R, to really use R for uh, graphical display and a tool to actually show the results that you have. Uh, hopefully, after this workshop, you'll know that R is a lot better than Excel and you can actually make very pretty graphics with R, even better than with Excel. Um, and I think also the key point of R is that it's simple and it's rather effective programming language. That is, if, even if you don't know too much about programming, you're still going to be able to use R. Okay, so that's it for the reference and the history. Um, I would like to give you a few references as well. So this is a, a very nice book on introduction to statistics. I've been using that quite a bit. I've copied a couple of the examples in the lecture today. Uh, so if you want to know more about R and if you want a good book, this is, uh, this is a good reference. It's not very expensive either. Uh, there's a nice, so sometimes, you know, it, it's, it's, um, you're using R and you sort of forget about the commands and, and, you know, you would like a reference card. So there is a reference card available from the R website. So you can download that and you can just have it besides your desk. And every time you're working, you can look at the comments that, you know, you don't remember. Uh, this is a nice tutorial that you guys should have looked at already. There's a couple of nice examples. Uh, so we're not really going to use that today. It was more for you to play with it. And of course, there's a lot more resources from the R Project website and Bioconductor.